the primary author of this work is my student, Mihai Dobrescu, who would be normally giving the talk, but unfortunately he couldn't make it in the last minute, so I will do my best to replace him. This talk is about software data planes, and by that I mean network devices that perform their line rate uh, packet processing functionality, for instance, IP forwarding, in software running on general purpose CPUs. A key advantage of uh, such uh, network devices is that um, it is easy, in principle, to frequently reprogram their functionality. For instance, if the operator of this device um, learns of a great new way to perform intrusion detection or application acceleration, in principle, it should be easy to make room in her software data plane for to drop in these two new pieces of functionality. Um, one might even envision um, an app store, right, where network operators could shop for interesting new pieces of packet processing functionality to drop into their software data planes. Now, in reality, things are not that simple, um, and that's because frequent reprogramming unavoidably brings, brings along bugs. So what if this new piece of, um, you know, application acceleration code has a bug, so upon receiving a special type of packet, it does something weird to it, right? You know, it corrupts it or it, you know, executes an infinite loop and so on. So software data planes, on the one hand, bring along the promise of flexibility in the sense that uh, we can frequently reprogram their packet processing functionality, but at the same time, they bring along the danger of unpredictability in the sense that frequent reprogramming will unavoidably introduce performance and behavior bugs. So what we need is data plane verification. We need to be able to take the binary executable of a software data plane, provide it as input into a verification tool, together with a target property, for instance, that this data plane will not corrupt a packet in a specific way, and the tool should be able to tell us whether this data plane satisfies the target property or not. And if we can do that, then we can retain the flexibility of software data planes, uh, but also make them predictable. So how does one go about building such a verification tool? So suppose we have um, a, a software data plane with two packet processing elements. Um, one way to prove that this data plane satisfies a target property would be to um, execute it with all possible input packet sequences and verify that the target property is satisfied for all of them. But that would be practically infeasible. A more realistic way would be to use a well-known technique called symbolic execution and I will illustrate very quickly how that works. So suppose um, the uh, first packet processing element consists of this chunk of code, which uh, reads um, some field from the input packet, and if it's smaller than zero, it does something, otherwise it does something else. Now, one way to represent this piece of code is with a tree that has two branches. One branch corresponding to the case where the if statement is true, and the other one to the case where the if statement is false. Um, now, suppose that the second packet processing element consists of a similar chunk of code that also can be represented with a tree with two branches, and now if I attach the second tree to each of the branches of the first tree, I have an execution tree that represents these two pieces of packet processing functionality together. Okay? So for each branching point in the two chunks of code, there exists a branching point in the execution tree that I'm showing you. And each path through the execution tree corresponds to a different sequence of instructions that the two chunks of packet processing code may execute. So symbolic execution generates such execution trees automatically from some piece of input code. And when I say that we symbolically execute a path, I mean that we uh, explore this path for all the possible inputs that will drive the data plane down this path. Then, one way to prove that this software data plane satisfies a target property would be to symbolically execute all the paths and show that the target property holds for all of them. Now, the reason we cannot do this in practice is a well-known problem called path explosion. So you notice that in order to create my execution tree, I copied the subtrees that correspond to the second uh, piece of packet processing code twice. Now, if I add the third packet processing element to my data plane, I will have to add the corresponding subtree four times. So the number of uh, paths in the execution tree grows exponentially in the number of branching points in the input program, in my example, the software data plane. So in the end, there are so many paths that it becomes practically infeasible to explore and, and reason about each one in isolation. Okay, so there exists no general solution to the path explosion problem, but there exists an idea that can help and that is uh, compositional analysis or composition. 
So it is often the case that a subtree appears multiple times in the execution tree. So sometimes it is feasible to reason about the entire program, in our case, the software data plane, uh, by executing each subtree only once. So that's the idea of composition. The challenge is how to apply this idea, at what granularity? Because if we just apply it in a generic manner, it's not going to solve our problem. So what we propose, our solution, is domain-specific uh, verification. First, we define the domain. So we propose a set of rules on how to write software data planes so as to make it easy to apply the idea of composition. And then um, we leverage these rules in order to um, sidestep path explosion and, as I will show in the rest of the talk, open the door to complete and sound data plane verification. Um, so in the rest of the talk, I will describe how to deal with challenges that arise from long pipelines, the presence of loops, large data structures, and then I will close with our first results. So I said earlier that if we have a software data plane like this one and we simply symbolically execute its, uh, its binary, then we will run into the problem of path explosion. What this means is that verification time will depend exponentially on the number of elements in the software data plane. So in my example, there are three, right? and that's a bad thing. Fortunately, a software data plane is not a generic program. It has certain properties. One of them is that it typically follows a pipeline structure, which means that it consists of distinct pieces of packet processing code that do not um, share mutable state. So the only state pass between these elements is typically the packet itself as it traverses the pipeline, and optionally some metadata that is associated with the packet. This level of isolation makes it feasible to um, apply composition at the element level, and by that I mean reason about each packet processing element in isolation and then compose the results as needed to reason about the entire data plane. And if we can do that, then we uh, can reduce verification time by as much as an exponential factor because it does not have to depend anymore exponentially on the number of packet processing elements in the pipeline. To give a very quick example, suppose we're trying to prove that this um, software data plane um, will never hit a failed assertion. So we analyze each element in isolation, and it turns out that the third element may actually hit a failed assertion from, for some input packet. So we have a problematic uh, branch. So that does not mean that the entire data plane may also hit this failed assertion, right? Because in the context of the data plane, the problematic branch in the third uh, element may never execute. It may never be reached. So what we do is we start from the problematic branch, and we work our way backwards, and we try to find a path through the data plane that reaches the problematic statement. And if we manage to find at least one such path, then the data plane may hit a failed assertion, and the target property is not satisfied. Okay, so what we do is pipeline the composition. The rule we are imposing is that um, a software data plane must follow this pipeline structure, so it consists of distinct elements that do not share mutable state. And what this rule enables is that we can do composition at the element level, which uh, reduces verification time by an exponential factor, as much as an exponential factor. Um, let me note that this is already how we write software data planes mostly, okay? So we're not proposing some crazy new programming model here. So I've been implying so far that reasoning about each element in isolation is easy. Why might that not be the case? Because of loops. Suppose um, one of the um, packet processing elements in my example, software data plane, is an IP options element. And let me focus on it. In reality, the execution tree of such an element would not look like this. It would be way more complicated. And that is because an IP options element um, will typically iterate over all the options carried inside the input packet. So starting with the first option, it will check, is this an option of type timestamp? Is it an option of type um, you know, record route or loose source route? And then it will ask the same thing for each of the subsequent options. And I didn't even have enough room to expand the execution tree uh, in its true form. So if we simply symbolically execute um, the binary of uh, such a packet processing element, verification time will depend exponentially on the number, on the maximum number of IP options that may be carried inside a packet. And that's a bad thing. That's internal path explosion. Fortunately, a packet processing loop is not a generic loop. So typically, there exists very little state that is shared across iterations. 
like a loop counter or an index that shows where to start reading next, for instance, where to start reading the next IP options. So if the programmer somehow makes that state explicit with the verification tool, then it becomes feasible to apply composition at the loop iteration level. Okay? So we reason about each iteration in isolation and then compose the results as needed to reason about the entire loop. Exactly the same way I described with uh, elements and data planes. And if we can do this, then verification time uh, can be decreased by as much as an exponential factor because it does not have to depend anymore exponentially on the maximum number of, of uh, options carried by the input packet. Okay. So what we do is loop decomposition. The rule we um, enforce is that when software uh, data planes include uh, loops, these must follow this mini pipeline structure, which means that there is little state sharing across loop iterations, and that is somehow made explicit by the programmer. And what this rule enables is that we can compose at the iteration level, which can reduce uh, verification time by as much as an exponential factor. Finally, um, Suppose that a packet processing element in my example data plane is an IP lookup element, and let me uh, focus on it. You can guess where this is going. So in reality, the execution tree of an IP lookup element would not look like this. It would be way more complicated. And that is because such an element um, will typically contain at least one access to a large data structure. For instance, it will look up a, an output port in a forwarding table. So here's what will happen if we just symbolically execute the binary of such an element. Suppose that this is the part of the execution tree that corresponds to the code before the lookup. The moment we symbolically execute the call to the data structure to read the data structure, the symbolic execution engine will create a new branch for each entry in the forwarding table. So if we have 100,000 entries in the forwarding table, which can easily be the case, we'll have 100,000 branches there and you can guess what this will do to the size of the resulting execution tree. So the problem is that if we symbolically execute an element that accesses a large data structure, um, the size of this data structure may cause path explosion, which intuitively should not be the case. So what we do instead is we abstract away the implementations of data structures when we analyze each element uh, in isolation. Okay. So um, if um, an element includes only data structures that expose a well-defined interface, um, and that is somehow made explicit by the programmer, then the verification tool knows not to symbolically execute any call to this interface. So in my example here, it would skip, it would not uh, symbolically execute the call to read the forwarding table. And this is what this does to the resulting execution tree. So now verification time does not depend on the size of the forwarding table. So we do data access decomposition. The rule that we impose is that uh, software data planes should use data structures that expose a well-defined uh, interface, and that is made explicit by the programmer. And what this does, the effect of this rule, is that it becomes easy now to abstract away um, the uh, implementations of data structures when we analyze each packet processing element. Now you will ask, what about the implementations of the data structures? Okay, so shouldn't we analyze those as well to make sure that they satisfy the target property? So our position here is that software data planes should be using verified data structures to begin with. And by that, I mean structures for which somebody has already proved all the relevant correctness and performance properties that we need. Do such data structures exist in reality? They do. Um, and based on our experience, if we build a data structure out of pre-allocated arrays, then actually it's much easier to analyze that data structure, either manually or statically. So how do these, oh, and, and as a proof of concept, we, we build a couple, a hash table and a longest prefix match table. So how do these verified data structures perform relative to their um, non-verified counterparts? Again, based on our experience so far, they're at least as fast because they rely on simple array lookups, but their negative thing is that they have a much bigger memory footprint because they rely on pre-allocation, right? Because if we did dynamic memory allocation, we would not be able to, the, to, the, to then uh, verify and analyze these data structures. So what we're essentially proposing is to trade off memory for verifiability, right? For the ability to perform complete and sound verification of uh, software data planes. And given the decreasing cost of memory, we think that this may be a trade-off worth considering. So. Let me um, close with a few results. Um, we used these um, domain-specific optimizations to verify stateless 
and two very simple stateful click pipelines. And what we proved about these is that they satisfy bounded execution, so no packet will cause more than a given number of instructions to be executed, so no infinite loops, and crash freedom. So um, the pipeline will not abort, will not exit with an error, uh, no matter what packet it receives. In the process of trying to prove these things, we uncovered some other interesting problems, and I will very quickly describe one of them. So what I'm showing you here is um, an IP fragmenter, code from an IP, IP fragmenter. So this piece of code deals with a case where a packet that carries IP options must be fragmented. So each option must be copied to each fragment. So the code loops, iterates over all the IP options carried by the packet. So we're in the process of trying to prove that a pipeline that includes this chunk of code honors, uh, satisfies bounded execution, and we could not. And in trying to figure out why, we run into this problem. So this statement here controls when the loop ends. This statement reads from the packet the length of the current IP option. Okay, so O in is the packet. And it stores it into a variable called optlen. And this statement increments i, the loop counter, by optlen. So you can see the problem already. So this does not account for the case where the packet in that particular uh, point carries a zero. So if that's a zero, then optlen becomes zero and i is incremented by zero and we have an infinite loop. So if um, a pipeline includes this statement, this, this chunk of code, um, and some other condition holds that we describe in the paper, then you have a security bug because somebody can craft a packet, put a zero somewhere, and make the, the data plane uh, enter an infinite loop. So this is the kind of problem that you can uncover if you can do complete and sound data plane verification. So what I'm showing you here is verification time, and this is the, the last uh, slide I will show you before concluding. Um, so on the uh, y-axis, it's verification time in minutes, and that's the amount of time it took us to prove the properties I showed earlier about various simple click pipelines. And I'm showing how verification time changes as we add more and more packet processing elements to our pipeline. So that's the x-axis. So let's focus first on the um, white bars. So my pointer doesn't work well, but the white bars that are uh, toward the left, the ones marked generic core. So those bars correspond to vanilla symbolic execution that does not use any of our domain-specific optimizations. And what you see there is the moment we add an IP lookup element to our pipeline, verification time becomes impractical because of the silly things that symbolic execution does with large data structures. Um, now let's focus on the gray um, uh, bars that, that are marked with generic edge. So these also correspond to vanilla symbolic execution. Um, but apply to a pipeline with a small forwarding table, only 10 entries. Okay? So now adding an IP lookup element is not a big deal, but the moment we, add, we allow input packets to carry one IP option, that's marked with IP option 1 on the x-axis, immediately verification time becomes 2.5 hours, and the moment we allow them to carry two IP options, verification time becomes uh, impractical, so we have to abort verification. And finally, the black bars correspond to our domain-specific optimizations, and you see that verification completes in less than 15 minutes. Again, there's no magic here. We just tailored the verification to the specific domain. Very quickly, I'm flashing the most influential pieces of work for us, um, and let me just mention uh, S2E, because maybe some of you have not heard, it, heard of it. Um, we did not do our own symbolic execution engine. We use this S2E software analyzer. What's great about it is that it takes a binary, it produces the execution tree, and you don't need to know anything about program analysis to use it. We didn't when we started using this, so we didn't have to write any models or anything, so I highly recommend it. Okay, to conclude, um, the, more, the, the more advanced, the more mature program analysis tools become, the more sophisticated the programs we can analyze with them. But what we're saying with this work is that now there exists already an excellent match between what state-of-the-art verification tools can do and the way we write software data planes. We already write them in an almost verification-friendly way. So if we take a tiny little extra step and we impose a few basic rules, then that will open the door to complete and sound data plane verification, and then we'll be able to retain the flexibility of software data planes and at the same time make them predictable. Hi, Kostin Reicher from Polytechnia Bucharest. Uh, great work, uh, thanks. So I want to ask you, you mentioned that you need to change the source code for this work. 
and then you checking binaries. So what changes did you have to make to click to get this to work, to get the binary checking to work? Okay, I didn't have to make any changes to click. I mean, to, to the click elements. To the click elements, okay. So um, with respect to the pipeline structure, click is already written this way, so I didn't have to change anything. With respect to the loops, I had to take out the loop um, counter from, let's say, the IP options element and make it part of the packet metadata. So I had to change a few lines of code in my IP options element, for instance. And I would have to do the same for any packet processing element that includes a loop. So a little bit of change there. Basically write each iteration as its own function mm -hmm. and expose the counter. And the third is about data structures. You know, I had to change, for instance, a NAT element, which is what we verified. We extracted the data structure and we had to expose a very concrete interface to it. So the paper reports the lines of code, the number of lines of code that we had to change. And did you check any, like, you know, more involved um, data planes? Because these, these are sure. really toys. Sure. So, no, these are the ones, what I described in the paper. So it's IP router elements and a NAT box and a traffic monitor that uh, maintains, uh, collects per flow statistics. Let me say, they are simple elements, but if you just use existing tools, you will never be able to verify them. So from a verification point of view, they already present important challenges. That's why I started with them. Mm -hmm. But of course, you're right. The next step will be to tra take more involved elements and try to verify those. Thanks. Hi, Matt Ari, Princeton University. What kind of interface does the data structure need to expose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So I didn't have time to cover that. Um, it's like an extended key value store. So we can discuss that. It's not, uh, we can. There are many options, but the one we think makes more, more sense is a key value store. So you can read uh, a value, or you can write, or you can, um, you can expire a value. You can say that, you know, I will not need this, this value anymore, so the control plane can, can uh, log it or clear it, something along those lines. But we can debate that, right? Anything that's a well-defined interface will do. Thank you. Um, Saman Zunas, University of Miami. Uh, great work and great presentation. Thank you. Um, so one quick question about the requirements that are fed to the, uh, to the whole framework. Um, how easy do you think they are um, to, to determine f for uh, the sysadmins or whoever is in charge of verifying these data planes? And um, if they are kind of represented in logical form, um, is there any e or easier way of determining those or coming up with them? Sorry, so you're asking um, if it will be easy for the admins to determine what, to determine what to check? Yeah, basically those requirements that are the second input to the verification in addition to the uh, right, data plane. Right. So the vision is that, y your question is spot on, so the vision is that it shouldn't be the admins that determine those because it would be difficult for them. It should be the programmers that follow these rules, and then once they follow the rules, it should be easy for the admins to just take the tool, the the packet processing uh, pipeline, throw it into the verification tool, and it automatically checks. So it should not be the admins that have to check the but requirements. But these pieces could be developed by different developers, right? Yes, they could be. But as long as the developers honor our rules, that's the idea that then the resulting code becomes very easy to verify without the admin having to do anything special. I see. That's the vision. I see. Thank you. You're welcome.